Let's tee it up. Let's look at those notable defensive free agents, Bo. You just mentioned what I think a lot of people are going to consider the crown jewel of this free agency period for the Cardinals. Cardinals are projected to have over $70 million in cap space. That's before any extensions, cuts, uh, you know, contract manipulation, uh, the extension of the contract. They got a lot of funds. They're top five in funds. Jalen Johnson could be the benefactor for the Cardinals of a Chicago Bears franchise that could have a new GM and head coach. They did not prioritize him, giving him an extension. They, they're, they're extending other players. They're extending, you know, uh, not Chase Young, but Montez Sweat. You look at this list. If all these guys are available, you can have any of them. Who, who are you prioritizing first? Man. Is it Jalen Johnson? Yeah, yes. But here's what I'll say. Could they get three of these guys? Is that is that too far fetched? Is that am I setting the expectations too high? I I think two is very possible. I mean, when I look at this edge group, I'll take any one one of those four guys. Correct. Right. I mean, Brian Burns, Josh Allen, those guys are unreal. Uh, And then you you couple them with with Jalen Johnson on the back end. And then I'm not saying you're going to Chris Jones. I don't think he he'll go anywhere. Uh, But if you could get a Wilkins. Uh, yeah, some of these players could get tagged too. We yeah, know yeah, absolutely. So, but could, if you get two of these three guys, man, does that change how your defense looks, doesn't it? They just like we talk about it offensively, and they don't have like a bunch of young blossoming talent outside of a couple spots, but they have some veterans that we like. Like defensively, like outside of the safeties and Kazir White, like they don't really have any veterans to build around either. Like that's where mm-hmm. you can go and splurge. Like. You're going to pay DJ Humphreys to at left tackle $22 million, but you're not going to spend $22 million on Jalen Johnson in his mid twenties. Like, of course you are. I, yeah. I think if I'm looking at both of like these three positions, I think the most likely combination is a defensive lineman and a corner. I think edge rusher, they could just run it back and then draft an edge rusher in the early to mid rounds and probably feel okay about it. Like you have to, in my opinion, like Chris Jones is probably that's that's probably just doesn't fit their window. And if he's going to sign a short term deal, he's going to do that with Kansas City. Mm-hmm. I I I think if those three guys are available, you have to secure one of them. Yeah, and I think if those three corners are available, you have to at least have the conversation. But your defensive line group is just not an NFL starting defensive sure. tackle group. It like. It feels when you look at this edge rush group, like Daniel Hunter's not going back to Minnesota. No, it feels like that relationship is just. Chase Young's not signing in San Francisco. Right. And and the uh, <laughs> me saying three of that group was sensible. My sensible bow is out the out the window. But the amount of money that they're going to have to spend and premium position players like like that are that when if they any of those guys become available. You can bet that Monty Osford's going to be hitting up their agents, the representation. But uh, like the only person I see that might be tagged and, and de- just destined to remain on his his current team is Josh Allen, right? I think Jacksonville would work that out. But yeah, your point, like if Brian Burns gets tagged, he's going to burn the stadium to the ground. Like I don't I think, think I think that's a scenario in which they they probably go their separate ways. It feels yeah. like it feels like it if they haven't committed at this point. Unless they have a new regime and they look, they have, they might have a new GM. Like right. a, a, this could play into the, the guy's on his hand. fourth coach, right? <laughs> I, I think that they very much overplayed their hand of not trading him last year when they had a huge offer from the Rams. Thank God that didn't happen. But I, Brian Burns, to me, if you can get him on a second con, that's like the Chandler Jones trade, yeah. Times too. I mean, like that. He's the kind of player where you can, you could definitely get. Uh, an instant 14, 15 sack guy, anybody. And I'm not just being a homer. Anybody's getting elevated by this coaching staff, JG and Nick Rallis. Like they resurrected in part Hassan Reddick's career. They took him from a B plus a minus to an A plus guy and he's kicking ass and I'm happy for Hassan, but there are some guys that really, I think could benefit from being a, a gem, a crown jewel in Jonathan Gannon, and Nick Rallis, the defense. Yeah, everybody's loving Brian Burns from the Carolina Panthers. And look, this isn't going to be uh, easy for it's not just, hey, so money. Dylan Richardson, give me Ken, Kenny Moore and Jalen Johnson. Here's why I like Jalen Johnson over Kenny Moore. And Dylan, I thought about Kenny Moore when I was looking at who's going to be available as far as free agent cornerbacks. Kenny Moore primarily plays in the slot. 
And I think that that's somewhere they're going to move forward with, with Garrett Williams. And I just don't know if Kenny Moore, if his game translates to outside and it can play, he can be versatile. And he's got experience with Jonathan Gannon, like when he started his career and with the Colts, Kenny Moore, Jonathan Gannon was there. So we'll see. Um, but man, is it fun to kind of try to forecast this two? If you get two of those guys on that defensive list, Johnny, it completely changes what you do. And if you do, like, say you get an edge and you get a corner, and then you can just focus all, all put all your focus on defensive line uh, in the draft. I mean, that it makes things, it simplifies things. I think we're looking at a situation which, like, if Jalen Johnson hits the free agent market, he's probably the number one player available. His P, you know, his PFF grade is this year. Not that that's everything. Yeah. Take a guess what his PFF grade is this year. I don't know, like 89, 90. And he's got a coverage grade of 90.4. How the fuck are the Bears so bad? And they have a <laughs> no, legitimate number one corner and they just get worked all the time. I know their defense is better. God, I mean, it's like Cardinals have been a, a rough franchise for, for, you know, touch and go here and there. But like they re signed Patrick Peterson. Like when you have an ace, when you have a number one player at a key position, you like, they're trading for Montez Sweat mid-year in a lost year, a premium second-round pick, and then just like signing him and not paying Jalen Johnson. I hope the Cardinals are the can best. Can I just have? Can I have some fun here? Like I just this is why not? I mean, it's it's the well, second it's show. December, we have fun every day. Week. Yeah. I mean, just let's just it's dreaming. It's free. Let's just say like if the Cardinals get one of those edge rushers, and, and then it just it, and say they're out of the Marvin Harrison Jr. sweepstakes, they're okay. at five six. Like they could trade down, accumulate more picks, take Jazir Newton out of out of Illinois, and then it's like you're starting to cook with some grease here as far as your front seven.